Uh, what's happening? podcast episode 297 i'm matt durson clay inferno and we have a special special very special guest international sensation mc lars is here thanks for coming on the show man hey matt and clay this is uh, my first time on the show and i feel very welcome so thank you for having me hey anytime no we're happy to we're happy to have you so let's just get it right off big show coming up uh march 1st right in at Great Scott in Austin, right on Com Ave. <laughs> it's right down the street um, from you, Derson. It is. It's pretty close. Well, right down the street from where I work. But uh, yeah, Great Scott. Um, so it's Mega Ran, MC Lars. It's going to be a hell the, of a time. The Big O. <laughs> Tell us about this opening act. I've never really heard him. Oh, it's Big O, right? Yeah. Um, he is from. So he's from Idaho. Uh, he's from Boise. He opened. He opened for us at this festival we did in Seattle last year, and he had a really great drummer and bass player. And he he kind of raps, but it's also kind of like punk. And I was like, man, I would love to play with his band. And like, I felt like he was a great MC too. So we did a few songs together. So his band is going to play some songs with me, and they're really cool. And he's like a punk rock guy, like a DIY guy, very hardworking, like really really funny and positive so we thought we'd bring him on and um he is yeah he and his band are are really cool so i think the fans are going to appreciate them i mean the people who like mega ran and my music since i feel like our music's pretty positive and diy and yeah. smart they'll, they'll like big o so yeah yeah you definitely nice. come from um you know like a like a good a good punk rock diy you know warp tour uh, you know, kind of aspect there too. So I think that the this sounds like a great guy to open for you guys. I can't wait. And also, I want to say, Clay, you you guys have had such a great track record with our the shows we've done, whether opening for MC Chris or being by ourselves or with Cuckoo Kangaroo. So I uh, I always trust you because you go hard with the promo, you and your whole team. And so it's gonna be tight as heck, dude. Uh, <laughs> we, we we appreciate you, man. And it's all it's all it's all love up here, man. I mean, you know. Like the the nerdcore chip tune scene, you know, it's like it's it's small, but but also it like it appeals to a lot of people that might just like MC Lars or might like the Proto Man or or it, they only see them see you guys at PAX or something like that. So I do like to have like you know nice shows throughout the year just just so we can get to hang out with our friends. That's all it's really about for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, and we all get, you guys always take really good care of us. And I think the really great thing I love about the nerd music community is that fans, are, it's small, but the fans are so loyal that it feels like, um, it feels, it just feels like it's so cool. Like I know you did Chris and us twice in a year and both shows were like incredible. It's just such a loyal audience and especially around New England and Boston, you know, so it is like a family thing. And, uh, you know, I feel like we'll all be doing this for years to come so. <laughs> yeah no it's great it's a passionate oh, very passionate fan base that's for sure these guys get into their can stuff. you guys hear me yeah 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 can you hear me oh, yeah cool. so can I ask a quick question I, I was reading a little bit up on you uh, can we talk a little bit about Lit Hop uh, oh shoot <laughs> great I mean I, it's cool I'm not, it's, I don't know are you like sort of the and I've never really heard of it, except in reference to you. Maybe I'm just not. Uh, see, you have a song called "Mr. Raven." You have a song like about Ophelia, you know, and stuff like that. What What was the uh, inspiration for that? You just really like literature. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, that's a really great question. Um, I did a, a TED talk about it at, at USC, where I talk about like interesting <laughs> things between rap and literature. I was an English major in college. Up, I got to give props to, there's an uh, artist named Baba Brinkman. He came up with that term, and um, he's a dope Canadian rapper. And I just started 
you know, my first rap was based on Shakespeare's Macbeth, and I thought it was cool how the witches kind of chanted in this iambic tetrameter format and i was like oh that's that lends itself to rap and i like like the um just how how poetry can lend itself to hip-hop and so what's also cool about it is that there's so much inspiration for song material like i feel like there's so many ideas for songs to write about and it kind of gives it a hook um for talking about so yeah so it's basically just rap songs about books and poems and literary nerdy things and mega ran and i are wor- working on an album that's all literary raps it's gonna it's gonna be out in the fall it's called the dewey decibel system oh, oh nice. nice nice can't wait for that thanks man we do, actually <laughs> nice. we do a song because we want to include graphic novels oh okay well all right you're you on a comic book podcast you gotta you gotta <laughs> tease us with the, at least one of your sources for the comic book stuff <laughs> wait say that again so, so what? Give give us just at least one of the graphic novels you think. Well, about. Right now, we're just going to do Watchmen, but um, nice. We might do more. I, I, the question I had for you guys is: Should what should we use as our parameter reference? The the book or the movie? Because I know there are some different. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think the book myself, but that's that. You know, that's the original, and I, the movie I thought went a little too far off as you know i don't know maybe it's just me but i i definitely like the graphic novel better but you know whatever <laughs> what do you think Clay? uh well i like it when you know you could even do both you know like you could mention something that happens in the movie that didn't happen in the book but still like base it mostly on the book you know like because uh you know you could reference some of the actors or something like that because <laughs> i really yeah, like maybe. that I really like that movie. Um, it's just visually, it's a really nice movie to watch. But yeah, the the actual book, like you could go, you could even mention just that, like how much Alan Moore hates that when they make a movie out of his <laughs> out of his stuff. Like, is he really was he not it? behind it? Did he was he upset? He well, he cast the check. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, I mean... <clears throat> no, he didn't. Actually. Oh, he did. No, he oh, gave, all right. he gave all his money to Dave Gibbons, who was the uh, the artist. Oh, that's um, right. So he says he has like this really like super zen attitude. Like, you guys are gonna make this movie. I don't back it at all. Take the money, give it to Dave. He drew the thing. It made he made it look beautiful. I just I don't think that this should be in a movie. It's a comic book. You know, he's just kind of like really kind of strict about that stuff, and he hated v yeah. for Vendetta. He he worships a snake, so I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, he's a weird yeah. guy. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I say graphic novel, Clay says both. I mean, whatever you're, you get the inspiration from, I guess, man. I don't know. Well, you're going to yeah. have to read it. You know, nine panel grid, nine. Is what's is there a nine over nine, uh, like, musical beat uh, <laughs> pentameter or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, our, what we're doing is we're doing we have we're having a bunch of our friends be the different characters. So um, I'm the comedian. Megaran is Rorschach, and then we have all our friends as the different people from the story. So it's basically because it's about the book. It seems like the graphic novel is about assembling reassembling a team. So we True. wanted to like reassemble the nerdcore homies and a lot of people who have been like not as prolific these days, trying to bring them out of retirement. So we're just waiting to hear who we can get, but um, that's the concept. So. Musically, it's like a throwback '80s Run DMC style beat because it's kind of it came out in in the '80s, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we thought it would the music would fit if it sounded kind of like Beastie Boys Run DMC. So it's coming along really well, and um, yeah, I think it's just cool. Any like I saw the New York Times now don't they don't have a best of the graphic novels list now? It's just kind of included with the best books in general, and I think that's symbolic of comics as an art form gaining increased quote unquote legitimacy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. No, that is, that's true. It's, I mean, with all the movies and everything, it's definitely raised the awareness, you know, and everything. So that is what very is, cool. I actually didn't know that. <laughs> I, I saw it was on Reddit like a few days ago. And then people were like, what are you talking about? They, they took them off and they're like, no, they connected them with, uh, with general literature. So I think that's kind of tech. That's awesome. That is. That's that's sweet. So Lars, wow. you, you were saying that it's like kind of a Run DMC vibe. Did, did you know like how much uh, Daryl is into comics? Like DMC oh. has his own comic and everything. 
Yeah, wasn't he? He was at New York Comic Con like signing, right? Yeah, and he's he's like super into comic books. Like Clay interviewed him at Boston, right? Yeah, was it Boston? Yeah. yeah. Hey, how's Boston his voice? Comic-Con. Is it kind of coming back? Yeah, yeah, he's all right. Yeah, yeah, he's good. I, <laughs> I know for a while. Problem. Yeah, on the la- he didn't he he wasn't on really the last run you see record much because he he really for a while he could only whisper. He had like a something with his vocal notes, but it, that's cool. It sounds like he's. His, his I, voice I think he's healed up because I, I've uh, I've chatted with him a couple times since then, even, and uh, yeah, just he like he likes to empower people like and you know young kids because he was looking up to he was like a he he was like he was like you like he studied really hard like his his parents wouldn't let him you know his mom wouldn't let him like go out and do run dmc stuff when he was in high school unless he finished his homework you know what i mean so like he's a really smart dude and he loves reading he loves comic books and uh he's a great dude man did you get him on the record (laughs) yeah that's cool yeah no i would love to have him on the record oh my gosh are you kidding that would be amazing (laughs) hit him on twitter you know i met him once at a public enemy show and 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 it was the spin 20th anniversary party and he was just hanging out and I said, Hey, thanks for all you've done for hip hop. And then we tried to get a picture together and it didn't, it, the, it, the picture came out badly. So I referenced that on the, on the first track, <laughs> my second album. So how I couldn't uh, get a photo with him, but I, I would love to reach out to that, that guy. Cause he is hip hop royalty. You're sure. right. I'm, but yeah, he's like, or he's not only Godfather of hip hop, but you know, Godfather of nerdcore, like you said, you know, yeah. he's always rapping about Spider Man and stuff. Like, you know, back when it was being started out, you know, like it's great. He yeah, that, that rhyme. He's like, uh, and since since kindergarten, I acquired knowledge, and after twelfth grade, I went straight to college. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> best. Okay. Yeah, when you talk about the the eighties feel and everything like that, yeah, he's he's the guy you gotta get, right? <laughs> I know. I I read this great book. It's called. Um, the big payback. I think the art, the the uh, writer, his name is Dan Charnis, and it's a really cool book about all the um, all the people behind the scenes of hip hop, like who ran the labels or who connected the artists with the producers. And it's um, and there's a whole thing about how Run DMC basically was like a favor that uh, that that uh, Russell Simmons did to his little brother because his little brother was a great DJ and promoter and he was like fine i'll help you guys make an album and then it was like the the biggest thing ever and it's just cool how like ac- hip-hop comes from a lot of or art in general comes from a lot of like happy accidents and yeah. i really recommend that book to any fans of hip-hop history that's awesome yeah very cool well we'll throw it in the show notes there <laughs> uh, have you guys read the um do you guys know the uh hip-hop family tree the ed piscor series I know it. I haven't read it. It's kind of on my like perennial list of stuff I need to read. That's I have fantastic. no idea what you're doing. <laughs> it's a, Ed Pisker is this um, is this graphic novelist, and he did he has a series where he's just basically it's a graphic novel history of all of of, of rap from from the seventies on, and every year he puts out another edition, and um, it's really beautifully drawn, and it's like pretty much like very like. Um, holistic and it's awesome it's won a bunch of awards anyway it's cool because it's like the definitive graphic novel history i think you both would enjoy it shout out to ed pisker he follows me on twitter he's nice oh right, he's kind of nice all right i <laughs> <laughs> will check that out definitely uh thanks for the recommendation you guys are tight Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, We're all right. Lars, I wanted to ask you about uh, how your Patreon is going and maybe tell the people out there that don't know about it, like what you've got going on there. It seems interesting because like a lot of podcasters, a lot of comic book creators use Patreon too, or they ask for donations in other ways. But uh, Patreon is kind of like growing as a way to make art these days. So I wanted to ask your opinions and see if you had to tell us what you're doing over there. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for the plug. I um, it was it's funny. Patreon was started by a friend of mine from college. This guy Jack Conti. He was in a band called Pomplamoose, and uh, he started it because he was getting so many YouTube views, but like the YouTube monetization wasn't that high with the because he had all these covers and stuff. So he launched it, and I I've been on it for about a year, and I do two songs a month, and I like it because it it gives 
my fans a way to they get us something extra like they get back in the studio music videos and instrumentals and then if you donate a certain level you get to come hang out in the studio and you get oh wow that must so be it's, awesome it's pretty cool it's, it's it's been going really strong and i've done about 22 songs and they're all what i say is that these songs may or may not be eventually on an album but if they are i can promise people that they'll be like remastered or retweaked or changed a little bit so what they're getting is exclusive versions of songs that won't exist anywhere else and, and so it's kind of like behind a paywall where if you do sign up you get access to the older stuff but not like as much access as if you subscribe if you for the newer stuff um but have you guys ever messed with patreon for your podcast we've looked into it yeah but it's tough like I don't even know what we would offer necessarily. Yeah, that's that's the kind of thing like we don't have yeah. uh, uh would, like we don't have a, anything exclusive really is we're like a weekly show. We it's we want it to be free. So uh, it's I guess maybe we give concert tickets or something, but that's not like every month or something. So I don't know. Yeah, we're yeah, we trying try to, to figure we've out We've definitely like, looked into it. Yeah, we're trying to figure out what we would What offer. do we give? What do we give to these people, <laughs> you know? I think people people podcasters and YouTubers a lot of them just give shout outs like in the comments of a of a video they'll be like shout out to these people or um, every year you send everyone a shirt. Like I do that too. You get if you oh, that's a, a shirt, great idea. You get a yeah. shirt, an exclusive shirt that I won't ever sell on tour or on my website. So you guys could uh, that would be pretty cool. I mean, I feel like the thing about Patreon is that people are just happy to give it's like they're happy to help keep the things they like alive and 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 yeah i think there's there's a lot of um joy in just being able to say oh yeah i'm helping this this cool thing exist you know so i don't know that's my opinion i I, I, the reason i say that is because like i one of the songs i did was a pokemon song and and i did it and we did a video and people and it came out on Patreon with an extra verse by Megaran and then I did the video with Spose, but people didn't seem to mind that like it it came out on both platforms because I think people were just happy to have like a, a special version of this song that the general audience got. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, oh, it's just very Pretty positive. Cool. Very that's a good way to look at it. I always think of like, oh, you're just begging for money. But like, no, you're right. It's a positive thing. Fans feel like they're part of it, you know, giving up, you know, um, helping something that they like, you know? So. I will say that the interface um, on the mobile device isn't as good as on the desktop. And I feel like Kickstarter and Pledge Music, they kind of have a better interface, but I think it's just because Patreon's new. So um, if if anyone wants to check it out, you, you have a much better experience on, on a uh, desktop or laptop than you do on a, on a mobile. So I just want to say that. Yeah. Good to know. You Good guys, advice. you know what I love? You guys are always like, you're you're on the road so much, you know, but I love the, uh, your Facebook live stuff is so great. Like, it'll be like, uh, Randon Lars at, at a McDonald's, like, just stop in on, on the way to the next show, answering a bunch of questions. And, and that's like, also like really awesome fan in, interaction. I always like share it and try to get more people to watch. That's so fun. Dude, thank you. I love I love the Facebook Live stuff, and we love doing the freestyle stuff. And it just it seems like um, that's cool because the technology for live streaming video has come so far, and it's really fun to be connected with the fans on there. So, yeah, Facebook Live. Shout out to Facebook Live. Maybe we could do a Facebook Live broadcast of this of the show coming up. Oh, oh that's, my, that's a good idea. I'll hit up uh, I'll hit up our recording broadcast guy. He'll be into that. That'd be cool as heck. Yeah. Nice. Damn, yeah. You know, maybe have your patrons there. <laughs> uh, they get an extra camera angle or something. Yeah, yeah, something <laughs> works, something like that. That's very cool. Like, I've I've donated, I was donating to a comic book artist um, for a while, and it was just, like, a very low tier. But it was, like, he would just, you'd get an email with something that he had drawn, like, that week or whatever. So it was. it is a very cool way to interact with with artists of any kind that you, uh, you know, that you like and you want to see their stuff and you want to see them succeed, obviously. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. It's a really, it's a really amazing time to be alive. And it's like, there's ne- never been a better time to be a nerd. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah. It's the best. I mean, never been a better time to be a nerd. <laughs> right. It's it, good words to live by there. And what, what's your vibe right now, Lars? You're just like, uh, 
chilling, getting ready for the next tour because it's not it's just right around the corner, right? For you and for you yeah. the road. I, I, I'm um, we go out in a few weeks, um, and I'm just I'm in I'm in Brooklyn these days and um, working on this album with Megaran. Doing we're doing a Huck Finn song that's dropping tomorrow for Patreon, and then I'm also. Yeah, and I, I do. I I'm working on. Um, I do workshops at schools, so I'm like I go into schools and do hip hop workshops with students. So I've been doing some of that in Manhattan, and basically just staying busy. I mean, I think that it's the thing. Of, the cool thing about Patreon is being able to like constantly be working on stuff because I know that I can cover my costs. You know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Great for the tour. Oh, and I'm going to England in May for some festival shows, and um. Basically, that's it, and and enjoy life every day, you know. Oh, that's awesome, man! Yeah, <laughs> we'll definitely put a link up, um, you know, to anybody who's listening. Um, we'll put a link up to your Patreon, definitely, if anybody doesn't know about it. So uh, uh, we'll find you on there. We'll link up. Don't worry. Thanks, Matt. You got yeah. <laughs> very good morals. <laughs> oh well, you know. So it's only fair. You came in. You came on here. We're probably going to get a lot more listeners thanks to you. <laughs> How long you guys been doing the podcast? Oh God, I don't know, like five, six years, something. Yeah, like long? yeah, since two thousand nine, wow. right? So, yeah. Oh my God. Uh, and we're uh, <laughs> we wanted to get you in under the wire as a special guest because we're about to hit three hundred. So that's like a lot of episodes for us. Three hundred, yeah. <laughs> and it's every Sunday. Uh, pretty much, give yeah. or take like, vacations yeah, give- and like weird holidays and yeah. like that we you know just can't get it together sometimes we'll like skip like a couple weeks in a row but mostly it's it's every sunday we get together and you know yeah give misinformed opinions about comic books and movies that's right i make mistakes every week at least yeah and then if <laughs> if matt likes a movie we'll hear about it if he doesn't like it we'll hear about it even more <laughs> uh, what i was going to ask you guys um what who are some of the cool guests you've had? I mean, maybe you don't, maybe you don't want to talk about it, but if you do, I'm curious. Oh, well, yeah, that was, no. it's, all, it's like a, it's like a flashback episode. We could have picture a, a slideshow. Yeah. We did well, have, we had, front a lot came front on. Lot. Yeah. Um, that was awesome. We've had, uh, we did a show with, uh, Tom Sharpling. He came on our show. That was pretty cool. Um, and my favorite was, uh, Gary Wolf, the guy who wrote, who framed Roger Rabbit? Whoa! How yeah. was that? That movie. We're like buddies. It's awesome. Yeah, he's the <laughs> best. That guy's super cool. So wait, so how did how, well, he put out a new? Didn't he put out a third? He put out a third book in the series, the Roger Rabbit series, like last year or something. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's and, who plugged Roger Rabbit or something like that. It's pretty uh, awesome. Yeah. So what I heard also, this is what I heard. This is interesting that he sold the rights to the book who censored Roger Rabbit for only like 20,000 bucks. Yeah, I know. Well, it was a different time. It was like the early eighties when he sold that and the movie didn't come out for another, like, like, you know, eight or nine years. But he also though kept, he kept the rights rights to the book, but Disney doesn't own the character. Ah, which is obviously where the money is. And yeah. no one will ever get that. He tells us all the time. That's the thing he's most proud of. He's like, no one right. will ever get that deal at Disney or Hollywood again. Like, right. they call that the Gary Wolf deal. Yeah, the wolf clause. Right. The wolf clause. <laughs> yeah. The wolf of sheep's clothing clause. You know, something, something, something interesting about the first book is that, um, speaking of crossovers, so Matt Groening's Life in Hell rabbits, like his pre-Simpsons uh, yeah. rabbit sisters, are in are featured in who's censored Roger Rabbit as like minor cameo characters which is crazy oh, this weird. Roger Rabbit crossover I know it's like a shared universe <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> and it's like very much like that would never happen again no, I read those no. book I remember reading those books as my sister had them when Simpsons was first just on Tracy Ullman show like I remember like reading that stuff like being like oh these this is really really weird they were like a gay couple or something those bunnies the Akbar, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was like, wow, this is like, this is like, because I loved reading like the far side and Bizarro. I loved like comic strips. I obviously like always love comic books, but I loved that (laughs) stuff too. And I was like, wow, this is like really out there. This is awesome. And very R rated, like with swearing and like 
not for kids. I remember one year I got that. My friend, it was like his 10th birthday, and I, for his birthday party, my mom wanted, she wanted me to pick out a book for him for his present. So I got the book, and <laughs> mom got was Simpsons, and then his mom was so mad because it was so inappropriate for yeah. like an 11 year old. Hey, but it looks like a kid's, you know, I mean, <laughs> looks like a kid's thing. Yeah. Oh. Almost. Almost. <laughs> That's right. That's awesome. Uh, I meant to ask you guys, what do you, what are your, if you were guys had to pick an all time favorite graphic novel that you would recommend, like Megaran and I check out, what would you guys have an answer to that question? I mean, is it even an answerable thing? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, everybody loves the Dark Knight Returns, the original Batman Dark Knight Returns. You know, um, I can't think of much recently, unfortunately. <laughs> you know I'm what a, I mean? I'm a big fan of. Um, I'm a big fan of a couple of different ones. Like uh, V for Vendetta, I think is is way cool, and especially like these days with uh, the current political situation, V for De- Vendetta is like you know I read. There's certain ones that I read over and over again. Like I read that over and over again. I read The Killing Joke over and over again. I read The Dark Knight Returns over and over again. I read Watchmen. Um, a lot of Alan Moore stuff. A lot of Frank Miller stuff. Oh Just yeah, yeah. Go tos. Any of those Sin City books. I'm a big David Mack fan, and he had Kabuki uh, way back in the day. That was like his master's thesis project. So, oh, um, really? Yeah, yeah. So he's pretty cool. He does his own art and writing and everything. So it makes it, media art. Um, can Anything I, by him, I will read over and over. The mask <laughs> that the anonymous people wear, that's from V for Vendetta, right? Yes. So, so that, so that, that book specifically has kind of influenced history a lot, and they're like revolutionaries or something. Sorry if I'm ignorant about it. No, no, no. Yeah, it's a Guy Fox mask, right? The guy who tried to blow up Parliament. Yeah, that's the, yeah. And he and it's in the future. Yes, it's in the future, but it was like written in the '80s, so it was like in the year, you know, 1996. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, <laughs> right. oh my god, it'll never be 1996. And yeah. actually, that. The, you, there is probably some arguments we were talking about Watchmen. Like the the movie does take like like some turns away from the graphic novel. Like if you're, I have a hard like do the graphic novel on that one. Like the Watchmen, I'd say you know it, you could go either way. But like I love the movie, but the movie is is way different. And, v for uh, Vendetta, you mean? Yeah, V for Vendetta. Yeah. Um, yes. But yeah, so they. The anonymous P- V was just one guy, like almost like a revolutionary, like swashbuckling, like I'm gonna blow up Parliament kind of kind of guy. Like I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna I'm gonna be like a vigilante almost because the government mistreated me my entire life because of spoiler warning all of the stuff that happens to him during the thing. So <laughs> uh, so like then then the Occupy people started buying these guy fox masks and using them because they were identified with the character and they wanted to and the anonymous thing they wanted to remain anonymous yes yeah yes. like and actually yeah. th- that's like a uh, a side uh a, a, or uh something that was related to the movie more was like those masks being available everywhere but alan moore actually looks like supports Occupy and Anonymous and like when when there was Occupy London and Occupy New York like he would he like went down to like Oxford Street or whatever and like was talking with these people he was like hey did you know that I was <laughs> probably the reason that you're wearing those masks right now and it actually was like was very supportive of the cause so so would it be safe to say him and Frank Miller are two of the probably best writers in comics like most influential yeah, as far as like names that everybody knows, and you've definitely read something by them, if you're a comic fan. Yeah, I mean, there's and other guys obviously, for X Men. But... Probably like Chris Claremont is is a big deal. And, yeah, uh, you know, like the Phoenix Saga. That stuff is all really cool to reference, and uh, also you know, like Mark Miller, who has like a bunch of movies out now. Oh yeah, um, yeah, Mark. Is kind he's of a... he's pretty amazing. Like, there's the what's Mark Miller done? That's well, kick he ass. Did, he did kick ass and he did, um, he, he did, did a bunch Marvel, of Marvel he, stuff too. He did the he did, Marvels, he did Ultimates and stuff, but he did Huck pretty recently, which was pretty well received. Anything he does, they make into a movie. He did that one, um, 
what was that one with Kingsman uh, Secret Service? Yeah. What oh, was that the one with Angelina? Uh, whatever. Oh, I forget it. Uh, it's like called Loaded or something. I forget. No, whatever it was. But yeah. Um, <laughs> anything he does, they make into a movie now, basically. Were you guys um, Mad Magazine fans growing up? Oh, yeah, love yeah. Mad Magazine and Cracked. Um, I, I, yeah, I loved I loved how Mad Magazine. I feel like artistically that inspired me because it was so topical and so I learned so much from it. And I think like with rapping, if I can make something funny and educational, then I feel like I'm doing a good job. And I feel like Mad the Mad Magazine um, humor kind of like w- was a precedent for all this like the meme humor on the internet and like stuff like Weird Al and parody stuff. And I feel like that magazine was so iconic and so many of those artists and writers like had such a deep effect on culture but people might not recognize the names but they recognize like like the the satirical stuff and 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 the parody stuff and how that had such a deep um impact on culture and it's just interesting how like comic books really are at the core of like the uh, of 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 our oral culture you know and i think that's like well really- yeah I mean, that's they're like our modern day like legends, you know, like or 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 whatever, you know, myths, you know. It's it's very cool, uh, and you know, here you are too, rapping about them. So you're bringing it to another <laughs> another fan base here. Layers on layers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was so mad uh, when I think of Mad Magazine and Cracked. I was so mad at my sister because her dirtbag boyfriend got like in house suspension. And she's like, do you have, like, any, like, mad magazines or comic books that I could give to my boyfriend? And I gave her all my Cracked and, and Mad Magazines, and I never got them back. Oh. Uh, yeah. Clay. I mean, it Clay. was maybe five. <laughs> when I say all of them, it was maybe five. <laughs> and she was, but I was so mad. Cause that was you like should have told your ago. sister to break up with that guy. Well, I th- she eventually did. <laughs> oh, good. Um. It's funny how Cracked lured Don Martin away, right? Because he was such a iconic artist at Mad, and then he oh, became yeah. like Cracked's flagship artist. And then Cracked, now I guess their main contribution is they have a great website, like a funny yeah. thought, internet presence. I would say that Cracked.com is a bigger web presence than Mad's e-publishing. I don't oh, know. For- I Probably, think, yeah. I think so too. I, and like Mad, the history of Mad Magazine. There's actually books that I've read about that too. Um, but um, Mad Magazine is part of DC Comics and, and Warner, so like they're just kind of like that's why they had like a TV show is because they could just put it on their network, you know? Oh so, right, with uh, Artie Lang and all them. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, some of it was good, some of it was terrible, but mostly. What's great are the fold-ins in the back. (laughs) The fold-ins in the back were awesome. I love their movie parodies, though. That was the one thing I definitely could, even if I was a little kid, I I could understand it. Oh, yeah. A lot of the political stuff went over my head. I'm not going to lie. But I could understand everything. It's educational. Like The political stuff I remember finding, my mom was a librarian and she'd bring them home, and I learned so much about, like, the, the political history of the 80s from that magazine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. It's su- super, super joyful. And we, we had, um, my sister and I loved playing, there was a Mad Magazine board game. Did anyone else have that? Uh, oh, I didn't have that. You had to lose, the, the object was to lose all your money, right? Yep, yep. Oh, <laughs> I think I do remember that. Yeah. <laughs> very <laughs> rare. That's incredibly rare. Lose all your money. Well, I did pretty well in life on that, but I didn't uh, <laughs> get one a game. Yeah, life. You <laughs> always ended up at the end with like seven kids and like your own yeah. died and all no money, stuff. no money. Mad Magazine. I love that. <laughs> Lose all your money. Oh no! Don't give me money. <laughs> it's like the uh, yeah. I was gonna say it's like the uh, t- 2008 recession edition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nice. Or the 2017. Uh, hey, uh, well, I don't want to get I, political on this podcast, but I want to say thank you guys for having me, and I really look forward to the show. We'll keep promoting it, and uh, anytime you guys want to chat about comics or what, whatever, I'd be honored to to be back. Thank you so much for yeah. Hosting. Well, we'd be honored to have you, man. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, man. We really appreciate you coming on the show, and uh, we look forward yeah. to seeing you again in March, and uh, and have a safe tour and, and and happy times down in New York. Till then, 
All right, thanks, Matt and Clay, and say what, please say hi to Mega Ram for me. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. All right, All right thanks cool. a lot, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Wow, what a cool dude, man. What a cool dude. MC Lars, man, yeah, check him out on Patreon if you uh, you get a chance. We're going to put a link up there. It's smart. Sure it's easy to find. All these nerdcore guys, man, they're they're like super positive, and it's just we need more positivity yeah. around. Super educated, too. How about that? Yeah. You know? I think that's this guy good. is a well-read individual, and yeah. he helps out in schools. Yeah, those I've guys are both like teachers. That. Yeah. It's so cool. You're right. So positive, so cool. Thanks for coming on. Make sure you come out on the uh, the first Great Scott, March 1st. So let's talk a little comics for a couple moments. Let me tell yeah. you something. Tell me. i got to get tell this me. off my, my chest. G.I. <laughs> Joe number two is such a bummer. Are you? Re- did you start picking this up yet? Or no, you told one? me it was bad. So you're just not going to get a G.I. Joe book? Because you said it was bad. Listen, I'm there's, sorry. Hold on. Halfway right. through the show. Uh, the show. First of all, it's like pretty. It's pretty okay, but it's kind of like as if like like a teenager wrote it or something. Not <laughs> not really all that sure. The Dreadnoks have like this house that they live in. But they don't have Zartan. They have Crystal Ball as their leader. What? What? Okay. What happened to Zartan? I don't know. They don't even explain it. The Baroness is in jail, in G.I. Joe jail. And she refuses to eat the kale that they give her. Whatever. Eh, I don't blame her on that. Kale is... Yeah. (laughs) And uh, then, uh, is there a Transformer named Wraith? W R A I T H. I I have no idea. There well, there's a was. transformer that looks like, you know, transformers better than I do. Like he I know, looks I like know like eighties transformers. Star I don't know anything. Like the yeah. the F sixteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starscream. He's a uh, classic. So I'll just tell you that Starscream is in this issue. All right. Um, yeah, and you don't like that. You're not no. happy about that. I'm not happy about it. And everything is leading me to believe that they're just incorporating all the Hasbro stuff into one big universe. It's called Reconstruction. And uh, then they got all this stuff in the back. Like, here's the Hasbro universe. You know, Transformers, Micronauts, ROM. Soon, you know, we'll have Mask or whatever. It's, uh, oh, yeah, Mask. It's just, a, it's just a major, major bum out for me. Major bum out. So written by a teenager, has Transformers. He's just not. What about the art? Is the art any good? It's. I don't. It's hard to say this without it sounding like an insult to somebody, because I don't mean it to be like that. It looks a lot like the artwork in your comic book, which oh, is, I which I love. I think your comic is great. Thank I you. I don't like. I I think that um, Mark could. Uh, could jump on this G.I. Joe book and you wouldn't even know. Like if he was started drawing <laughs> issue three, you wouldn't know. You would think it was the whoever's drawing it now. Uh-huh. So I guess it's not it's not bad and it's a style that I like, but I don't think that it fits with G.I. Joe. I see. What and I actually saying. think that your guy is better than this guy. Oh well. To be honest. Well wait if issue four he Because I did because how do better. I say that? How do I say I don't like the art? It reminds no, I me think of your... said it, it doesn't fit with this book. Yeah, I don't that's like the art. It reminds me of your comic. Sounds like a really right. well, that's a little, compliment. That's a little <laughs> that's insulting. That's not what I meant. Yeah. That's but not what I, I see what you're saying. It. it doesn't fit. Sometimes it doesn't... You know, like some guy like... Humberto Ramos, right? Can draw Spider-Man. Awesome. Yeah. But X-Men didn't work. You know what I mean? Like, right. it, it wasn't the same. It was it was okay, but I liked I it mean, much better. I amazing. Spider-Man. I'm sure it looks great, but it's just not, it doesn't right. fit. You know? Didn't work with, didn't work with that book, I don't yeah. think. And it wouldn't work with like Captain America probably or something. You know what I mean? Like it's not, whatever. This looks like That's- somebody submitted their artwork to IDW and they're like, this is all right. What do we have going <laughs> on? They just Give him G.I. Just- Joe. Yeah, That's he what it submitted like. G.I. Joe artwork and they gave, they just used it. Or the they last. just sent him, they were like, here's my anime sketches from my notebook I, in high school. And they're like, you know what? Let's make, why don't you draw a road pig punching Leatherneck in the face? 
Like, okay. So, not so much G.I. Joe number two. I don't know. I'm sorry I didn't buy it. I'm hate reading it. That's what I'm doing. I'm hate (laughs) reading it. You have a definite love-hate, more hate relationship with this, with G.I. Joe. Um, But why don't you bring us back up to, we're talking about positivity so well i i want to i don't want to all right positivity but i don't know maybe this is positive or maybe it isn't so marvel has decided the code thing they're not doing away with the codes they're but you're not going to get a code to that book so as most any listener i don't know you may know i would buy a book sell the code yeah keep the book Right. Keep the you know, so the idea was you spend three ninety nine in the book, you sell the code for like even if you sell it for a dollar seventy five or something. It's like a discount. You're getting a little bit of money off. Right. And it's not so, like it's free. It's not like your time is free. You have to put the effort into putting it on that's, sale. That's definitely true. But it was easy on eBay once you got going because you could just relist. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And stick a copy stick a picture of the cover change the number on the you know if you bought the same book every month it got to be pretty easy but then ebay stopped me so then yeah. i started selling them sort of privately but i got less in money. the underground in the dark web you're like the- well i still yeah the dark web i had a guy that i just emailed straight out and i said hey you bought a lot of my codes on ebay they won't let me sell them anymore do you want to just buy them from me and he's like sure we had a great little thing going for a while um but so it was I a little less you fun. guys smoking cigars laughing <laughs> pointing at the comic book store across the street and laughing it's both of you guys yeah uh, i don't you know where he lived little, you guys have i never met the going. guy i know his name was matt too and he always paid and i always sent him his codes and it was we had a great thing and now come to find out so marvel is going to include a code of like another book like an older book or two as opposed to the book that you're reading that's stupid so I guess they didn't really like this sort of secondary market that it, like people like me, you know. But you don't uh, even know what you're getting, right? Like, or I mean, you know, they'll say like, "Here's the first issue of Civil War," yeah. Because then they want you to go and buy the trade. That's the hope. The hope is like if you read or like Civil War two or whatever. So if they give you the first issue for free, the code, then you'll go to the store and buy the trade. So this works out supposedly is going to work out for the retailers. But also maybe even Comixology too, and right. the publisher because you get issue one and it's on your iPad already, so you just want to have them all on the iPad. By the other four, right? I mean, who knows if this is going to work? We'll find out. But uh, I, from my end personally, I will. I can see myself buying a lot less books. Right. You know, knowing that I can't take, I, I'll, you know, I won't be getting any of that money back. So like, let's say like. You know, whatever, some number one of like some book that I'm like, oh, maybe I'll buy this. And if I don't like it, at least I can sell the code. You know, like Unstoppable Wasp, number right. one. Right. I bought that because I was like, well, what the heck? I'll take a chance and sell the code. But the it's book- like, do you think it's going to be like every, every, um, Every issue, every November issue is going to have Unstoppable Wasp as the code. You know what I mean? No, like er, uh, I don't every X Men, every every Spider Man is going to have like some book that then it's like oh, okay, they're only really giving out one code to one book. To that's probably whole, right. Yeah, you know what I mean. Every for right, that month. right, right, right. That's probably what's going to happen. I don't know exactly. I just read about this on like on the the, the inner the interwebs, the dark webs. <laughs> no, well, I'm mad as hell about it. I'm a little annoyed. I mean, it's just like, what's the but difference? But then I mean, DC like, comes in and they're doing the code, right? So Yeah, DC's like, we'll give you a code. But Marvel's like, we're not going to do a code. Do you think anymore. maybe that DC is also going to like maybe do some sort of copy protection so you can't sell the code or something? I don't know how you'd be able to do that. I don't know. I don't know how you'd even do that. But it's just weird. I mean, it's a, apparently a lot of people were pissed about this. So we'll see if they bring them back eventually or something. But I, 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 here's the other thing, though. Like you said... As far as the time and stuff goes, yeah. Now, once I got kicked off eBay, it kind of did become a bit more of a a time suck. So I can't say it's the worst. You know what I mean? I will buy less books, which is probably better. <laughs> I'll That's the way more. I'm feeling lately. I'm buying less books, but I'm just making sure I like them or I'm at least hate reading them. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So it'd be, it'd be weird. I mean, I'm 
I'll be buying less books, but I don't know. Like, and I'll have, I guess, a little more time because that is a time suck. Like, yeah, doing all that code shit got to be kind of a Ridic. pain. Ridic. And then, yeah, I mean, once a week on eBay, it was easy, and they would usually sell like really quick because I would put the price pretty low. Yeah, you know, because I don't. I'm not trying to make money. That no, was one thing I never. ROI. That was kind of bothered me. You know, people. It's like I just bought a book for three ninety nine. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna sell the code for three ninety nine. Like what? Well, no, that's not. You just want to sit across the street with the other mat with your Cuban cigars, laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Point. No, I was definitely not doing that. I just wanted to make some of my investment. No, I know. Yeah. I never made money. I made money once on a code, and I don't know why, but it was like one of those Loki books. Oh. Or whatever. And for some reason, the bidding went up to like four dollars. And I was like, "No, it's you can just buy it." And I always get worried because sometimes I'd always get people go, "Oh, I thought this was the real book," right? Even though it says clearly digital code. So I was really afraid. But no, like I sent the guy the code, and they were happy. Hmm. So it's very weird. But yeah, those few years, however, only a couple years, I was doing this, but I never made money. No. I just was trying to make a little bit of it back. So anyway, that's not going to happen anymore. So we'll see what happens with Marvel uh, if they stick with this. Or we'll see what happens. What? Yeah, I don't know. What else came out this week? We had a Star Wars. We had a. Uh... I read Punisher. Punisher was good. Oh, I didn't read that yet, but I it's have it. It's really good. It's like he meets up with his grandma. She like heals him up, and uh, then they go on a little. Uh, they go on a little adventure with this grandma. So it's like the cover's really funny because it's like. This she's Nana like knitting or knitting whatever. with yeah. knives but she's <laughs> knitting like a, a punisher skull like crochet it's really fun yeah definitely that's on my stack it's a good one in star wars yoda story was good oh very yes very well yeah so well let's right. uh wrap it up bud. sorry clay yeah let's wrap it up i think uh thank you again to uh, mc lars for coming on check and, out uh, his patreon yeah, support Nerdcore Music. Come out to the concert. Leakpodcast.com slash events. There's a bunch of stuff there. So Yeah, yeah. it's on our Facebook page. Uh, yeah, and all our Facebook and all that, too. So MC and Lars, Clay got a little shout-out, too. Hey. He always treats everybody right on those shows. Try like to. That. Try to. That was nice of him. That yeah, was really was very nice. nice. Get a little plug for yourself. All right. Well, yeah, check it out all on our Facebook, leakpodcast.com. If you click on any of the things, we get a little kickback, of course. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you can support us just like you support MCR. And Buy we'll come up books. with a fun Patreon thing soon. Yeah, we'll work on it. Now that we know, we can give away a t shirt a year. Yeah, we can, I can do that. That's easy. <laughs> yeah. Very All right, well, cool. Thanks a lot, Clay. Thanks to you. Thanks to Lars. Thanks to everybody out there. Thanks to everybody out there. <laughs> All right. We won't even do the usual sign off. We're going to yeah, be positive. No, later, you guys. Later, Later you guys. awesome people. Yeah. Keep it positive. Keep it poke. <laughs> po. I've got nothing to do but hang around and get screwed up on. I gotta go. I've got nothing to do but hang around and get screwed up on. Just let it go. I've got nothing to do but hang around and get screwed up on. You gotta see it. Never been a better time to be a nerd.